again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. Today, we've got a really lovely stitch. This is the Chinese Puzzle Stitch. Very, very easy. It's got an awesome texture. It's not that much of a yarn eater, unlike some. And it's only a two-row repeat. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it is completely reversible. It looks the same on both sides. So whether you're doing a project like a scarf or a wrap or a blanket, I think this would make an incredible baby blanket. I think you are good to go. Uh, not, uh, well, it, it's been a while, but I did a hat, um, I was going to say not that long ago, but I did do a hat very similar to this particular stitch. It was the pine cone hat. Um, I'm going to put a link to that in the description box down below. But of course, that was worked in rounds. This is going to be worked as a flat panel. Now, for this particular piece, let me scooch on back here. I used Burnett Baby Sport. It is a three weight. So I'm using for this particular example, this is a five millimeter size H crochet hook. And for those of you that are not familiar with the, the specs, there is a lot of yardage here, which I absolutely love. 1,077 yards, and it is, of course, machine washable because it's acrylic. I use this for so many projects. It's not sponsored, but I like to let you know what it is that I use in case if you want to duplicate the results. Today, we're going to be using the same yarn in the blue colorway. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, as with most things, the base chain. All right, so the multiple for your base chain for this stitch, it's a multiple of seven chains plus an additional four chains. So right here, I have a total of 25 chains. I think, I think it'll make a, a good swatch. Uh, so I've got three multiples of seven, so that's 21 plus my additional four, so I've got 25 right here. I always suggest make a swatch first, that way you can get used to the stitch, used to the flow, see how it looks with the yarn and hook size that you're using, and from that you can determine how many multiples you would need for the finished width that you're going for. So make up your base chain, multiple of seven, plus an additional four, and we'll get to it. Okay, row one, going to start off in the fourth chain from the hook and into that fourth chain, two double crochet stitches. And the chains that we skipped, that's going to count as a double crochet. Doesn't seem important now, but you'll see what I mean in a bit. So from here, we're now going to do a double crochet five together. So over the next five chains, we're going to double crochet five together. So start off by yarning over, going into that next chain, and pull up a loop, pull through two, but don't finish that double. Nope, we're going to be doing that a total of five times. So we're going to end up with a total of six loops on our hook. So let's get to it. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, and we only have five. We need one more. Yarn over, and pull up a loop, pull through two, and then we pull through all six. There we go. And then to sort of lock it in, chain one. Okay. And then going to skip a chain on the base here. And in the next chain, five double crochets into that same stitch. Now it does stretch out the chain a little bit. I don't mind terribly. So what you could do is go underneath the back bump or underneath two of the loops that seems to look a little bit better i'm kind of no frills quite frankly so right now i'm just going to be going underneath the one loop 
with five finished doubles. So one, and two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then going to do another sort of uh, mega decrease of five doubles together in this very next chain we're going to start. So yarn over, go into that next chain, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, and we need one more, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all six loops, and lock it in place with a chaining of one. Skip the next stitch, and then another five double crochets in that one chain. So that is what we're doing. We're sort of increasing and decreasing almost like a chevron, but it is not a, a wavy sort of stitch. It has a pretty straight edge, all things considered. So I've already got four. We need one more. Okay, so we have our five. And then I'm going to do the five decrease five double crochets together excuse me so into that very next chain you only skip a chain when you did the the decrease so after the decrease then you skip a chain but not when you do sort of the the increase if you will so into this very next chain right here yarning over pull up a loop pull through two Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through all six loops. There we go chain one to lock everything in and then at this point you should have two chains left going to skip that next chain and in the very last chain three doubles and the reason why three is because we started with three technically speaking uh, what i was saying at the the beginning was how we did two doubles and that skipped bunch of chains that counted as a double. So we do have a, a sense of symmetry going on. So it's kind of wavy, but it's not a, a tremendous chevron zigzag going on. So there you go. That is row one. Okay, so for this particular stitch, the repeat is rows two and three. So let's do row two. All right beginning with a chaining up of two. You could do a chaining of three. However, I think two is just fine. It's not very important. You'll see why later. So after chaining up two, turn the work. We're going to be skipping this first stitch and working around the posts of these next two stitches. We're going to do two front post double crochets together. So yarn over, going around the post, yarn, uh, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, going around the post of the second stitch there, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all three loops right there. And because we just gathered those together, chain one, then we have this grouping of five together. Well, now we're going to be going outwards. It's always out, in, out, in, over and over to create sort of a uh, undulating fashion. 
Now, as far as where to stitch into, personally, I like to go right into this stitch where everything has been sort of brought together. You could go underneath here to make it easier for yourself, but then things would look a little bit staggered, you know, back, forth, back, forth. This looks a little bit better. So after yarning over, go into this stitch with five doubles. So that's two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then these five stitches right here, these five doubles, we are going to double crochet them together but again, with the front post. So yarn over, going around just the post, not into the top of the stitch, around the post. Pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, around the last one, pull up a loop, and pull through two. Then pull through all six loops, bringing them together, and chain one. Okay. Then, basically, we're repeating what we just did. We're going to do five doubles into this stitch right here. So I've already got two, three, four, and... Five. There we are. And then we're going to be decreasing these five. So yarn over, going around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, round the last post, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all six loops. There we go. And chain one to lock everything in. We're almost done with the row, but I need more yarn. It happens. Okay, and then again, going to be doing another increase, so to speak, in that little stitch right there. Five doubles. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, we are just about at the end, and we've got technically three doubles. All right. So at this point, we're going to do a double crochet two together. So this first post right here, yarning over, going around that post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over the second post, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all three loops, chain one, and what I like to do is, yes, you could go into the actual chain. I find it is a ton easier if you just do a double crochet in between the post that you just wrapped around and in between that last chain. Just do a double crochet into that space. It makes it so much easier.
And there you go. That is the end of row two. And it's looking pretty already, don't you think? All right, let's continue. Okay, row three. Start off by chaining up two, turning the work. And in essence, we're going to do the opposite of what we were just doing. Um, so where we had decreases, like right here, we're going to increase. Where we had increases, we're going to do decreases so that we have an equilibrium. So right off the bat, right here, we have our decrease where we did two double crochets together. Well, going into the top of that decrease right here, two double crochets, that's one, and that's two. So we're back up to three. Okay, and then we're going to decrease these next five. So yarn over, going around the post with a front post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all six, and chain one to lock everything into place. So we just did a decrease, now we need to do an increase into the top right here. So again, where everything came together, right in there, five doubles. It's one, two, three, four, and five doubles. Okay, then going to decrease across these five doubles with yarning over, going around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, thank you, yarn over, around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through all six loops and chain one to lock it into place. So we just did the decrease, now we need to do the increase into the top of that decrease right there with five doubles. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Then we get to do another decrease. So yarning over, going around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two. And the nice thing about this is that since it's only a total of six loops, you really don't need a, uh, a Tunisian crochet hook. No, you can totally get away with, you know, something with a very big taper. Um, so yarning over, around the post, pulling up a loop, pull through two, yarn over around the last post, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all six loops, chain one to lock everything in, and then into the top of that decrease, right into here, two double crochets,
there we are and then in between there and the last double right in between double crochet and there you go that is row three so we're going to do a full repeat row two and three and we shall proceed okie dokie Okay, so row two for the repeat, chain up two, turn the work, and because we have three doubles, we're going to start with a decrease. So after yarning over, going around that post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all three loops. Chain one, and then into the top of this decrease, going right in where they all converged together with five doubles. It's one, two, three. Four and five. Okay, gonna decrease across these five. So, yarning over, going around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, around the next, pull up a loop, pull through two, Yarn over, round the post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, round the last post, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through all six loops. Chain one to lock everything in, and then going on to the next decrease, making it an increase, five doubles in this stitch right here, right in the top. It's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, then decreasing across these five, yarn over around the post. Pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, second post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, third post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, fourth post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, fifth post, pull up a loop, pull through two, then pull through all six, and chain one to lock everything down. Five doubles into the top of this decrease. It's one, two, three, four, and one more. makes five. Then these two doubles, going to decrease them together, so yarning over, round the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through all three loops, chain one, and double crochet in between that last front post and your next double. I mean, yes, technically speaking, you could go into the second chain from the bottom, but honestly, this is a lot easier. Just a little secret between you and me. <laughs> and I think that it looks gorgeous regardless. And there you go. So that is row two for the repeat. So you're really starting to see the texture involved, and it it has some really cool dimensionality to it. Now, when I do another row, 
there will be an additional ridge just like this up here. So, oh, I love it. All right, let's do row three, and there you go. Last, but certainly not least, row three for the repeat. Now, as far as which row you end your piece on, whether it's a row two or row three, totally up to you. I think it's kind of arbitrary. Um, I'm going to end it on a row three. So start off by chaining up two, turning your work. Now we have a decrease here, so we need an increase, right? So after yarning over into the top of that decrease, two doubles. There we are. And then over these five, gonna decrease. So yarn over around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, last post, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through all six loops. Chain one to lock everything in, yarning over, and then five doubles into the top of that decrease from before. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, then over these five, gonna decrease, so yarning over, Round the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, next post, last post for that matter, pull up a loop, Pull through two, then pull through all six loops and chain one to lock it in. Yarn over in the top of the previous row's decrease, five doubles. It's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and then across these five doubles, decrease. So yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two yarn over, next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, there we go. Yarn over, round the last post, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then pull through all six loops. Chain one to lock them in, and then into the top of this decrease, two doubles, And last but not least, double crochet in between that last post and your last double crochet. And there you go. A nice full repeat because what can I say? I like to be thorough. The only thing I would suggest perhaps is make sure that you have the same number of ridge lines on one side as you do on the other. I've got two on this side and two on this side. Just for, I guess, maybe the sake of balance, um, it's not consequential, and I really don't think anybody's going to, you know, notice, but I, I notice. <laughs> so take that for what you will, and there you go, the Chinese puzzle stitch. 
Alrighty, my dears, so that's going to conclude today's tutorial on the Chinese puzzle stitch. I really hope that you liked it, and if you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation. Always do. And in the comments section, let me know what are you going to do with this stitch? Are we talking a scarf, a wrap, a blanket? What are you going to make? What sort of yarn? What sort of colors? always interested in your feedback and also hearing about your creative journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for everybody, and have a great day.